So you mentioned rewrite before or refactor before features. Mm -hmm. If you were to refactor the Twitter code base, what, what would that look like? And maybe also comment on how difficult is it to refactor? The main thing I would do is first of all, identify the pieces and then put tests in between the pieces, mm. right? So there's all these different, Twitter has a microservice architecture, um, there's all these different microservices. And the thing that I was working on there, look, like, you know, uh, George didn't know any JavaScript. He asked how to fix search, blah, 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 blah. Look, man, like the thing is, like, I just, you know, I'm upset that the way that, that this whole thing was portrayed, because it wasn't like, it wasn't like taken by people, like, honestly, it wasn't like by, it was taken by people who started out with a bad faith assumption. Yeah. And I mean, I look, I can't like. And you as a programmer were just being transparent out there, actually having, like, fun. And like, this is what programming should you know, be about. It's just like, I, I love that Elon gave me this opportunity. Yeah. Like, really, it, it does. And like, you know, he came on my, my the, 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 the day I quit, he came on my Twitter spaces afterward and we had a conversation. Like, I just, I respect that so much. Yeah, and it's also inspiring to just engineers and programmers and just, yeah. it's cool. It should be fun. The be people that were hating on it, it's like, oh, man. It was uh, fun. It was fun. It was stressful. But I felt like, you know, I was at like a cool like point in history. And like, I hope I was useful. I probably kind of wasn't, but like maybe I was. Well, you also know. were one of the people that kind of made a strong case to refactor. Yeah. And that that's a really interesting thing to raise. Like maybe that is the right, you know, the timing of that is really interesting. If you look at just the development of autopilot, you know, going um, from mobile eye to just like more, if you look at the history of semi-autonomous driving in Tesla is is more and more like you could say refactoring or or starting from scratch, redeveloping from scratch. It's refactoring all the way down. And like, it, and the question is like, can you do that sooner? Uh, can you maintain product profitability and like, what's the what's the right time to do it? How do you do it? You know, on any one day, it's like, you don't want to pull off the band-aids. Like it's uh, like, everything works. It's just like little fix here and there, but maybe starting from scratch. This is the main philosophy of Tiny Grad. You have never refactored enough. Your code can get smaller. Your code can get simpler. Your ideas can be more elegant. But would you consider, you know, say you were like running Twitter development teams, engineering teams would you go as far as like different programming language? Just go that far? I mean, the first thing that I would do is build tests. The first thing I would do is get a CI to where people can trust to make changes. So Be that if Before you keep I touched any code, I would actually say no one touches any code. The first thing we do is we test this code base. I mean, this is classic. This is how you approach a legacy code base. This is like what any, how to approach a legacy code base book will tell you. So, and then you hope that there's modules that can live on for a while, and then you add new ones, maybe in a different language or Before like, we add new ones, we replace old ones. Yeah, yeah, meaning yeah. like replace old ones with something simpler. We we look at this, like, this thing that's 100,000 lines, and we're like, well, okay, maybe this did even make sense in 2010, but now we can replace this with an open source thing, right? Yeah. And, you know, we look at this here, here's another 50,000 lines. Well, actually, you know, we can replace this with 300 lines of Go. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I trust that the Go actually replaces this thing because all the tests still pass. So step one is testing. Yeah, and then we'll step do. two is like the programming language is an afterthought, right? You know, let a whole lot of people compete. Be like, okay, who wants to rewrite a module, whatever language you want to write it in, just the tests have to pass. And if you figure out how to make the test pass, but break the site, that's, we got to go back to step one. Step one is get tests that you trust in order to make changes in the code base. I wonder how hard it is too, because I'm I'm with you on uh, on testing and everything. I have from tests to like asserts to everything, but code is just covered in this because uh, it should be very easy to make rapid changes and know that it's not going to break everything, and that's the way to do it. But I, I wonder how difficult is it to um, integrate tests into a code base that doesn't have many of them. So I'll, I'll tell you what my plan was at Twitter. It's actually similar to something we use at Comma. So at Comma, we have this thing called process replay. Mm -hmm. And we have a bunch of routes that'll be run through. So Comma is a microservice architecture too. We have microservices in the driving. Like we have one for the cameras, one for the sensor, one for the planner, uh, one for the model. And we have an API, which the microservices talk to each other with. We use this custom thing called Serial, which uses uh, ZMQ. Uh, Twitter uses um, Thrift. And then it uses this thing called Finagle, which is a Scala 
uh, uh, RPC backend, but this doesn't even really matter. The thrift and finagle layer was a great place, I thought, to write tests, mm -hmm. right? To start building something that looks like process replay. So Twitter had some stuff that looked kind of like this, but it wasn't offline. It was only online. So you could ship like a modified version of it, and then you could redirect some of the traffic to your modified version and diff those two, mm -hmm. but it was all online. Like there was no like CI in the traditional sense. I mean, there was some, but like it was not full coverage. So you can't run all of Twitter offline to test something. Well, then this was another problem. You can't run all of Twitter, right? Period. Well, Twitter Any runs, one person can't Twitter run. runs in three data centers and that's it. Yeah. There's no other place you can run Twitter, which is like, George, you don't understand. This is modern software development. No, this is bullshit. Like, why can't it run on my laptop? What do you do? Twitter can run it. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I'm not saying you're going to download the whole database to your laptop, but I'm saying all the middleware and the front end should run on my laptop, right? That sounds really compelling. Yeah. But can that be achieved at, by a code base that grows o over the years? I mean, the three data centers didn't have to be, right? Because they're totally different like designs. The problem is more like, like, why did the code base have to grow? What new functionality has been added to compensate for the the lines of code that are there? One of the ways to explain it is that the incentive for software developers to move up in the company is to add code, yeah. to add yeah. an especially large. And you know what? The incentive for politicians to move up in the political structure is to add laws. Yeah. Same problem. Yeah. Yeah. If uh, the flip side is to simplify, simplify, simplify. I mean. You know what? This is something that I do differently from 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 Elon with with comma about self driving cars. You know, I hear the new version is going to come out, and the new version is not going to be better. But at first, and it's going to require a ton of refactors. And I say, okay, take as long as you need. Right? Like you convince me this architecture is better. Okay, we have to move to it, even if it's not going to make the product better tomorrow. The top priority is making is getting the architecture right. So, what do you think about sort of a? Uh... Thing where the product is online. So how, I guess, would you do a refactor? If you ran engineering on Twitter, would you just do a refactor? How long would it take? What would that mean for the running of the, of the actual service? You know, and I'm not the right person to run Twitter. I'm just not. And that's the problem. Like, like, I don't really know. I don't really know if that's, you know, a common thing that I thought a lot while I was there was whenever I thought something that was different to what Elon thought. I'd have to run something in the back of my head reminding myself that Elon is the richest man in the world. And in general, his ideas are better than mine. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a few things I think I do understand and know more about. But like in general, I'm not qualified to run Twitter. I'm not, I was going to say qualified, but like I don't think I'd be that good at it. I don't think I'd be good at it. I don't think I'd really be good at running an engineering organization at scale. I think I could lead a very good refactor of Twitter, and it would take like six months to a year, and the results to show at the end of it would be feature development in general it takes 10x less time, 10x less man hours. That's what I think I could actually do. Um, do I think that it's the right decision for the business? Above my pay grade. Yeah, but a lot of these kinds of decisions are above everybody's pay grade. I don't want to be a manager. I don't want to do that. I just like, like, if you really forced me to, yeah, it would make me maybe, make me upset if I had to make those decisions. I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, but a refactor is so compelling. If this is to become something much bigger than what Twitter was, is it feels like a refactor has to be coming at some point. George, you're a junior software engineer. Every junior software engineer wants to come in and refactor yeah. the whole code. Okay. <laughs> like, that's like your opinion, man. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, sometimes they're right. Well, like, whether they're right or not, it's definitely not for that reason, right? It's definitely not a question of engineering prowess. It is a question of maybe what the priorities are for the company. And I did get more intelligent, like, feedback from people, I think, in good faith, like, mm -hmm. saying that. Um, from Actually, from Elon. And like, you know, from, from, from Elon sort of like, like people were like, well, you know, a stop the world refactor might be great for engineering, but you know, we have a business to run. And hey, above my pay grade.